which of course goes back to Euclid, right? It's not, Hilbert didn't invent this, but he would, went one, I think, significant step further, which is Hilbert said, let's use all the technology from symbolic logic, which a lot of people were involved in inventing symbolic logic, and let's go to some final extreme, because the problem, one of the problems, that, one of the reasons you got into trouble, you got contradictions in mathematics with set theory, is because, after all, words are very vague. And, and um, you know, the rules of the game, um, it's, it's, what we want to do to, to get rid of all these problems in mathematics and reasoning is, is, is come up with a, with a set of axioms, you know, get rid of pronouns, for example, right? Pronouns, you don't know what they refer to. And there's all kinds of things that are vague in, in normal language. So Hilbert said, well, the way we need to get rid of these problems is to come up with a finite set of axioms, a artificial language for doing mathematics. This is the formalism, the idea of formalism taken to the limit. Take formalism to the absolute limit and invent a completely artificial language with completely precise rules of the game, artificial grammar and everything. And that way, and, and then and eliminate all these problems, like the problems that Russell had. This was sort of an ambitious program to once and for all put mathematics on a firm footing. And one thing that Hilbert emphasized, which I think was, as far as I know, a key contribution that he made, was to say that he wanted this, this, this axiomatic, formal axiomatic system for all of mathematics. The rules of the game should be so precise that you have a mechanical proof checker, that it's completely certain and objective and mechanical whether a proof obeys the rules or not. So there should be no human element, there should be no subjective element, there should be no question of interpretation. If somebody claims they have a proof, it should be absolutely clear, mechanical, to check does it obey the rules and you prove the theorem or, or does it have a mistake, does it fail. So this is the idea that mathematics should be absolutely black or white, precise, absolute truth, right? This is the traditional notion of mathematics. The real world we know is an absolute mess, right? Everything's complicated and messy. But the one place where things should be absolutely clear, black or white, is in pure mathematics, right? So this is sort of what Hilbert is saying. And he proposed this as a goal, to have this formalization of all of mathematics and um, eliminate all the problems. Now, this was a program. This, this was not supposed to be something you did over a weekend. This was the, the Hilbert proposed this as a goal for putting mathematics on a very firm on a very firm foundation. Now, the, the next thing that happens, and he, and, he, and he and a group of very bright collaborators, including, for example, John von Neumann, um, set to work on this. And for a while, for 30 years, it looked sort of encouraging. And then, this is a quick summary of uh, 100 years of work. Let's see, am I running out of blackboard space? Um, then, as I'm sure all of you know, there were a few little problems. The problems are 1931, Kurt Gödel, and 1936, Alan Turing, who showed that it could not be done, that there were fundamental obstacles to formalizing all of mathematics and making mathematics absolutely black and white and absolutely crystal clear. So remember, what Hilbert is proposing is that we should formalize all of mathematics so that everyone on planet Earth should agree that a proof is either correct or incorrect. The rules of the game should be absolutely explicit. It should be an artificial language. And then mathematics will give you absolute truth. You know, you have to, absolute truth should be underlined in a very beautiful font. And the angels should, you should hear angels singing when you say the word. This was the thought that we mathematicians have absolute truth. It's ours. No one else has it, only us. Right, that was the idea. So it turns out this doesn't quite work, okay? So why doesn't it work? Well, Gödel shocked people quite a bit by showing that it couldn't work. And it was very, very surprising when Gödel did this in 1931. And, and Turing went, I think, more deeply into it. So let me give you a cartoon five-second, my take on how they, what, what they did it. So, so the way, so Gödel does it, Gödel takes the idea, this statement is false, what I'm now saying is a lie, I'm lying. And the problem is, if I'm lying, that means, you know, the, if I'm lying, and it's a lie that I'm lying, therefore I'm telling the truth. And, you know, so this statement is false, if you assume it's false, and it says it's false, then it must be true, right? And, well, there's a problem. So, so Gödel, Gödel considered this statement, this statement is unprovable. 
Now, unprovable means unprovable from the axioms of Hilbert's formal axiomatic system, unprovable within this system that Hilbert was trying to create, is the idea. Now, think about a statement that says this statement is unprovable. There are two possibilities. It's provable or it's unprovable. This is assuming you can make a statement say it's unprovable, that there's some way to say this within Hilbert's system. That required enormous cleverness, good old numbering, trickery for a statement to refer to itself indirectly because pronouns that say this or I are not usually found in mathematical formula, right? So this required a lot of cleverness on, on, on Gödel's part. But the basic idea is this statement is unprovable. So there are two possibilities. Either it's provable or it's unprovable. And this means provable or unprovable from the system that Hilbert had proposed, the final goal of formalizing all of mathematics. Well, if it's provable and it says it's unprovable, we're proving something that's false. So that's not very nice. And if it's unprovable and it says it's unprovable, well, then it's true what it's saying. It's unprovable, and we have a whole. Instead of proving something false, we have incompleteness. We have a true statement that our formalization has not succeeded in capturing. So the idea is that you know, either we're proving false statements, which is terrifying. It's not supposed to be the case. Or else, so that's certainly awful. And if that's not the case, we get something which is not as bad, but it's, it's awful, which is that our formal axiomatic system is incomplete. Here is something that's true, but we can't prove it within our system. And therefore, the goal of formalizing once and for all, all of mathematics, ends up on the floor. Now, I don't think Hilbert really wanted us to formalize all of mathematics. I think his go you know, he, he didn't say that we should all work in an artificial language and have formal proofs. Formal proofs tend to be very long and inhuman and hard to read. I think Hilbert's goal was philosophical. If you believe that mathematics give absolute truth, then it seems to me Hilbert has got to be right, that there ought to have been a way to formalize once and for all of mathematics. That's sort of what all of mathematical logic was doing. That's sort of what the axiom mathematics starting with Euclid is doing. The, the idea of breaking proofs into smaller and smaller steps. And, and Leibniz thought about this, and Boole thought about this, and Frege thought about this, and Rosalind Whitehead thought about this, and Peano did it incredibly good stuff. And it's the idea of making very clear how mathematics operates step by step. So that doesn't sound bad. Unfortunately, it crashes at this point. Okay? So everyone is in a terrible state of shock at this point. You read essays by Hermann Weil or John von Neumann saying, you know, I became a mathematician because this was my religion. I believed in absolute truth. Here was beauty. The real world was awful. But in number theory, ah, and, and, and all of a sudden, Gettle comes, and I want to kill myself, you know. <laughs> so, so this was pretty awful. However, this is a very strange-looking statement, right? And there are ways of rationalizing. You know, human beings are good at that, right? So you don't want to face unpleasant reality. And this unpleasant reality is very easy to shrug off. You say, well, who cares? I've never, I've, the statements I work with normally in mathematics, you know, what do they have to do with, they, they're not statements of this kind. You know, if you play this kind of, this is nonsense. If you do this kind of stupidity, obviously you're going to get into trouble. Okay, well, this is, a, this, I'm, that's rationalizing too far. So, because in fact, Gödel made this into a statement about element, in elementary number theory. If you write it like that, sure, you can say this is nonsense. Whoever heard of a statement in mathematics that says it's unprovable. But in fact, Hilbert made this, uh, Gödel made this into a numerical statement in elementary number theory, arithmetic. So it... It, it, it was a large statement, but in some clever way, with Gödel numbering, it was using prime numbers and other tricks. It, it was, he was writing it so that it looked like a statement in real mathematics, but it really indirectly